Now, the New Testament word for this, for the church, actually, is ecclesia. Everybody say, it. ecclesia. You just spoke Greek. Ecclesia. And it's this, I, it's a very similar meaning. It has translates as those who have been called out. And the ecclesia is comprised of those who are called by God to a relationship with God for a specific purpose. It's not just that you've been called out. It's that you've been called out for a reason. You've been called out for a mission, a vital task. Now, our English word for church can actually be traced back to a Greek word, which is kyriach. I hope I pronounced that right. I can't find any place that tells me how to pronounce that. Uh, Kyriaki is the English version of it, but how they say it actually in Greek, but it's, it's Kyriach. And this is this idea of those who belong to God. It's this Kyrios. Kyrios is another term for those that belong to God. We are a possession, a treasured possession. It's interesting. It's kind of hard, I think, for the Jews to understand that because what is God? How has God paid for them? But for you and I, He He paid a huge price for us. He paid the price of His Son. I've been purchased. I've been purchased. But the idea of holy does go deeper than that. It goes to this. It carries a sense of being ethically clean. Being righteous. If we go to the New Testament, go to Colossians 3.12. Paul's telling the church of Colossae, he said, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. See, what Paul's saying is, Because you are chosen, you should be doing these things. You should be holy, beloved, compassionate hearts. You should be kind. You should be humble. You should be meek. You should be patient. Not You don't do those things to be chosen. You do those things because you are chosen. It's the result. And if we go a little further, we keep going in that. He says, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the Lord, the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I want to stop there for a second. I I challenged you guys during the Lenten time to read the New Testament. And I I spelled it off. And I knew when I did that, I wasn't expecting you to, you know, read that and just, oh, I'm going to soak that in. I was just, just kind of getting you familiar with it. But that's not what Paul is talking about here. What he's talking about, he's saying, I want you the words of Christ to fill you. Okay, what does he say? He says, but the words of Christ dwell in you richly. If you're not reading your Bible, how can the words of Christ dwell in you richly? They can't. We need to, we, we need to, be, we need to be in the Word and we need to be reading it. Now granted, reading it in 47 sessions, you're not, you're not going to absorb a lot of it. But the idea was to spark, to light that little spark inside you that says, oh, I want to go back and read that. I remember that from Sunday school. I remember that from when I was a kid. I want to go back and read that part. We need to, we need to take it in. He goes on to say, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. See, Paul saying that because you are chosen, you need to do all these things. The fact that we are chosen, because we are believers in Christ, that we would do these. We'd want to be these kind of people. We would want to be this kind of church. 
But the church is weak. And the church is weak because its members are weak. The body, you know, my body is weak because my knees are weak. My hands are weak and my shoulders are weak. The church, despite its weakness, is still holy and universal. It's a spiritual reality. Yes, we are full of weak and broken, stumbling people. I, I was just talking to a young man this week. And he says he doesn't like to go to church because it's full of hypocrites. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Don't you think that's where they should be? I mean, if I'm, a, if, if I'm a hypocrite, don't you think I should be someplace where maybe some people can help me not be a hypocrite? Yeah. So when people tell me that, which I don't think is completely true, I think it's, it's just something that people say because they don't want to go to church. And they've met some people who are, and they've been hurt. But I say, wouldn't you want them to be? Wouldn't you want people to be in here who, who are struggling? Because I'm going to be honest with you, folks. We're all struggling. There's not one of us here who is holy enough to stand in the presence of God. Amen. We are broken. And we need to be honest with ourselves and honest with the world out there that, yeah, we're broken. Come join us. Because you're broken too. <laughs> be with us. And maybe together we can mend each other through the power of the Holy Spirit by the work of Christ. 